nearing a point of exhaustion, I think. You've traveled, alhamdulillah, thousands and thousands of kilometers. You've come from an entirely different continent for one particular purpose. And this is to fulfill the promise that was made to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim was promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if he called out to humanity, that they will come ala kulli damir. They will come on every mode of transport. They will come on camelback, on foot. They will come from every one of the four corners of the earth. And just in this bus, just between myself and you, I've come from Australia, you've come from Canada. We've come from, you know, the two different hemispheres, two different sides. And we've come seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the days go on, and as your exhaustion increases, and as your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to gain its fruition, and as you begin to mature in that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will remember this very first day as being the beginning point of something insha'Allah that will cumulate for all of you with a visit to the Masjid of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he's the point source that all of us gravitate towards in our nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we begin to drive, I want you to look out the window. You'll see that this place, initially Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, as Allah quotes him in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim, Oh Allah, you've ordered me to leave my family, my child, my wife in a land غَيْرِ ذِي زَرَعْ Nothing grows in it. رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ But I know that the purpose of it is that eventually they will be from those who will answer the call to prayer. And I want it to be something that from the thousands of kilometers you've transferred yourself in, that the point of focus is that Kaaba. And we're coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that sacred house of Allah, awwala baytin wudi'a linnas lalladhi bi Bakkah, in that blessed valley that we're about to visit. And as we drive to it, we're going to come from an elevated position and descend into that valley. And in that valley, you will see that today the opulence that may come and the marble that surrounds you, that initially it was a place that was barren. Nothing grew, birds did not flock, animals had no shelter. And Ibrahim, when he turned to leave his wife and his child, she said, Aqad maraka rabbuk. Is this Allah, your Lord, who said to leave us here in this place with nothing, no food, nothing? And he just, you know, pointed with his head, indicated with his head, yes. And he continued answering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command not to give explanation and that Allah would guarantee their protection and their future. I want you to understand that exhaustion, tiredness, scarcity, poverty, going without, that that is where barakah resides. Most of the time when we think of barakah, we think of excess. But look at every place that Allah describes in barakah in the Quran, it's a place of conflict, a place of isolation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, and may Allah grant it its freedom, the occupied territories and Baytullah al Bayt al Maqdis in uh, the blessed land of Asham in Jerusalem, in Palestine, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi barakna hawlahu. But that same place has been destroyed by the Persians and by the Romans and the Byzantines over and over and over again, bloodshed and hardship. And until today, you find that there's conflict there, but it is a place where Barakah resides. And you would think to yourself, how in a valley that had no food or water, that Allah would refer to Bekka as a place of Barakah. And that's because sometimes we've measured things with the wrong scales. And we look at our life seeking plenty, when in fact, that the austerity and the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us are where our connection to Him resides. And when you study the life of the Prophet ﷺ with us, with Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and myself over the next few days, you will see that the life of the Prophet ﷺ was anything but luxury. It was anything but excess. It was always one of balance and hope and optimism in the most difficult of times and in the most difficult of 
conditions. And therefore this tiredness that you feel today, it is meant to be. And every single person who has come on this journey has felt it, has experienced it. There's a thirst within you that can only be quenched when inshallah you will stand before the Kaaba. And as we begin our tawaf tonight, probably after Salat al-Isha, and as we begin our Umrah, I want you to remember these words. I want you to remember that you've come all this way to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the structure of the brick, not the structure of the stones that, is made it, that has made up the Kaaba, but that in this land, in that near vicinity, there is barakah in it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to experience that blessing in returning back to our families after this exhaustion as if we were newly born. Kama waladatu ummuhu as is promised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing and quickly so I give you a little bit of time to rest on our way to Mecca inshallah. Hopefully it'll be a quick trip. The second thing that I want you to think about is what connects you to everyone else in this bus. And for many of you, it might be the first time that you meet the person who's sitting across from you in this aisle. And you might have come with your wife or your brother or a friend. But really your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about being connected to our ummah. And this ummah is going to be visible for you today. You're going to see it as you make your tawaf around the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see written on the ihram, Malaysia, China, Azerbaijan, as our neighbors were seated next to us in, 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 in the airport. You're going to see people of all languages, all colors, all of them asking for the same thing you're asking. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, we wrong ourselves all the time. And if you don't show us your mercy, if you don't give us your kindness and your compassion and forgive us our sins, we will always remain astray and as losers. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to build that connection amongst each other and to extend it in radiating circles with the other people that you meet. One of the greatest blessings to come to Hajj year after year is that you meet the most amazing people. And I remember giving a talk similar to this on a bus similar to this last year. On a day tired as I'm tired with you today, with different faces, but the same spirit, the same souls, the same dua, the same hope, the same concerns, the same worries, the same uplifting experiences that I know we will ferment and have together bi ta'ala. So get some energy with you inshallah. Stay hydrated. Zamzam is gonna kick in. Trust me, there's barakah. And where you are tired, you find the energy. And where you think you don't have, Allah gives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that the one who has come with taqwa, يَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ He will give them from where they didn't think they would receive. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ And if you put your trust in Allah, Allah will suffice you. Allah will make sure you get to the place that you want to attain that Allah has destined for you to receive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open to us the closed doors in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala close to us open doors to haram in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us the opportunity to stand before Him in our prayers nearest and nearest and nearest to the Kaaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect our hearts to this blessed land and give us its barakah and return us to our families so that they can receive some of it from us in a change in our character and demeanor that we represent those who have come and returned from Hajj changed in spirit and in action. Allahumma ameen. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda. والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك